Hello again, my beautiful humans. We are back with another video all about the Scorpio full moon coming up on April 23rd. It is considered the pink full moon. If you're called to practice some spiritual woo-woo shit, you've come to the right place. We talk about everything easy to understand spirituality. I'm about to break this full moon down in an easy, quick, understandable way. My own personal witchy tips to get you through this heightened and emotional time. So this full moon is called the pink moon, but it's not actually pink, named after pink flowers that come out to bloom this time of year. Known as the wild ground phlox. Scorpio, a water sign, fixed water sign, ruled by the planet Pluto. The planet Pluto is uh, said not to even be a planet anymore, so I don't know what that says for us Scorpios. This full moon truly encourages us to dive in deeper with our emotions, hence in transformational energy. Front our fears, right? instead of hiding from them. It's time to rebirth and regenerate. We can shed what no longer serves us and rise anew like the phoenix in the sky. It's a beautiful and wonderful time to forgive others, forgive ourselves for past traumas, for past events, confronting our fears. This could be anything in life, truly. Everything that is in the darkness will come to light. Collectively, this should be a really interesting time. Side note, I just wanna mention, I have never seen so many celebrities exposed in the media before. It's awesome that are shifty in the darkness, things that are shifty that are hiding, we're going to get called out more easily and thoroughly. Full Moon in Scorpio encourages us to embrace our intuition, our inner intuition, especially like women's intuition. Really embrace the mysteries of life, the things that we don't know, the things that we're discovering day by day. I'm going to be going over some Full Moon practices with you. I hope you love them just as much as I do called to practice during this time don't use this time internally reflect under the full moon you don't have to practice unless you're called to during full moons it's a really important time to harness in on your emotions and how you're feeling and connect with that this is a time where the shadowy parts of our lives are emerging and coming to the light during the full moon it's wonderful to journal your thoughts because there's a lot going on intuitively thoughts come and go very quickly during this time because a lot is going on and a lot is manifesting if they feel like you to shed some light on the thoughts or wishes or manifestations, jot them down on paper or in a journal. Release and let go. Write down things you want to release, such as negative thoughts, habits, or emotions. Burn the paper as a symbolic gesture of letting go. Keep a glass of water nearby and make sure you put out fire thoroughly. As you're putting the fire out, envision letting those negative thoughts, habits, and emotions go and release them from your world and your existence and body. Oh, you know I say this a lot. It's a really good time to meditate on what you want in life. Get rid of past bad habits that you've kept in the darkness. Scorpios are all about secrecy sometimes and hiding what we don't want others to see, right? I love, love, love to meditate underneath a full moon outside. I feel like this is the most productive and beneficial way to meditate when it comes to moon practices. It's not like if you're inside, it doesn't benefit you or give results or whatever, but being able to actually physically see the moon while in meditation is the most intense and incredible experience ever. Especially on like a warm night where the sky is super clear and everything feels like it's participating with you. Do that once a year and feel fulfilled and feel recharged and renewed and you're able to actually see the full moon. Make sure that you really channel in on absorbing the energy 
You may feel silly at first. I did. I know I did. Sometimes if I'm outside and someone walks by and I happen to feel someone, I get embarrassed. I still, till this day. But it doesn't stop me from doing it and it doesn't stop me from being grateful for the practice after it's over. That person walking by is a perfect example of why we do this. It's a person walking by they're here, then they're gone. Your practice is longevity. Practice is representative of your personality. Maybe you shifted their reality by them walking by. Maybe they saw you and you inspired something in them. And then they go home and they practice and then they meditate. Make peace with what you're keeping in the dark or to shed some light on it and just embrace it and do some shadow work water practices that are super easy that you can do with things just sitting around your house. I mentioned this in many videos. I usually use very beautiful delicate jars. I usually use the same jars every single time. Just collect filtered water preferably and if you plan to drink it put it in teas uh, make a lemonade with it there's just so many things you can do with moon water it can be especially powerful um, using your moon water during practices especially during the full moon or under a full moon full moons take about three days to interact with us let your moon water by the second night you can use that for your practices or to drink. You can also use it for cleansing purposes. So clean your crystals, clean your altar space, go through and wipe down your front door with the moon water. Wonderful to really practice bath rituals. I love to put lavender and chamomile in my baths. Cleansing, Himalayan salt, water cleansing. Take a ritual bath or shower, visualizing the water washing away. Any negativity is leaving you, and your feelings are completely renewed. The more you envision this, the more you practice this, the more you ingrain this in yourself, easier it'll be to let go of negativity. So when you're doing your water cleansing, or you're taking your ritual bath or shower, make sure you really focus in and visualize the water washing away any negativity. Imagine it leaving all the way down all of your chakras out into the water. Anything that you want to release from your life, all those shadowy bits, use that water to cleanse away anything that you want to let go of. water release, visualizing anything I want to let go of, cursing, rolling down, getting rid of, detoxing from my body as I'm showering. Very easy, wonderful way to connect to the water element, communicate to the universe what it is that you're trying to release and let go of. Doing a lot of ancestral healing through my family water blessing. Every single day that I drink water or coffee, 15 minutes or so connecting with whatever I'm consuming. Happiness, creativity, energy into whatever it is that I'm about to consume. It's my life and it's a very easy daily practice that can change and shift your reality, shift your mood, shift your vibe. Whatever you put into the water is whatever you're going to get back. Floating candles. Love floating candles. They're so amazing. There's so many practices and spells you can do. Intentions or what you want on the candle. Dress it with herbs accordingly. Whatever is your favorite. Water scrying. Do a lot of this personally. A lot of people that have had success with it. It's all about what calls to you turn down the lights, you light a candle, and you fill a darker bowl with water. You look into the reflection of the water, you can see into the future, beautiful messages. It's such an interesting practice. Water sigils, easiest practices you can use, engaging with the sign of Scorpio or water. Write down everything you can think of, your affirmations, what you want in life, that to communicate to the water what you want, your intentions, and that water is going to 
hold everything that you've written down, all of your intentions, all of your energy. This morning, obviously, drink the water. Obtain all of those wonderful things that you've written down. Manifesting is just such a common description. I tend to not even use the term manifesting. I usually just assume, assume abundance. Nature connection is pretty important. Nature is all about life and death and rebirth and the cycle of life and the transitioning is very connected with Scorpio. Lucky enough to live by the ocean. Go do an ocean meditation, please, for me. <laughs> Spend some time meditating by the water. Listen to the sounds of the waves and feel all of the things, all of those shadowy parts of your life. Push them into the ocean and let them be, let them go. You know, to have a waterfall by you, like waterfall meditation. Go and meditate in the waterfall. A waterfall visualization. If you're in the shower or just simply meditating, sitting in your living room. Visualize a waterfall hitting your skin. There's nothing more cleansing than that element of water. Tarot and oracle readings pulling yourself a, a reading or a card or something like that is a great way to like gain insight into energy guidance on how to navigate yourself your emotions tarot is really good for like if things are kind of wavy at home or in your energy field or whoever you're hanging out with it can sometimes tell you shifty things like things that are shifty in your life that need to be kind of called out i feel like that is what tarot is for might be feeling a heightened sensuality. Scorpio is ruled by our naughty bits. I'm definitely going to start my moon time, my moon cycle, my period on the full moon this time around. Not only like my moon time, my period time I'm going to be connecting with on this full moon, but embracing my sensuality, my passions, taking time to connect with my body and indulge in activities that make me feel alive and vibrant and sexy and connecting with my partner. Scorpio themed rituals. Since Scorpio is associated with transformation, consider rituals that involve burning herbs like sage or palo santos to cleanse and transform your space. This is a very, very powerful time for manifestation. To set your intentions clearly and believe in the magic of the universe. Trust the universe to even if it's just a small amount of time, really believe in it and um, put your heart into it. As we collectively stand, dance, manifest, and spend time under the pink full moon of Scorpio, let's remember that we are all connected, guided by the same moonlight. Last but not least, just remember that the rituals are meant to be meaningful and personal. So feel free to adapt them to suit your own personal and spiritual practices and intentions. That's all I have for you today, and I will see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel. And I just want to say thank you for stopping by. I cannot clip this mic to my outfit, so this is how I'm going to have to talk. I'm sorry, I know it's annoying and I look stupid, but you're here. <laughs>